Happy prototyping everyone! The project for this video is a POF display. The POF display itself is made of different components. In the system overview, we will talk a little bit about each different component. First, we need to get the image, the video data from somewhere. My idea was to, to write a Java program, which is running on the host computer and is capturing the display. And this capture data is then transformed into raw pixel data and is streamed over the Wi-Fi to an Arduino ESP8266 directly mounted on the POF display. Then on the POF display there will be an FPGA and this FPGA is taking the raw pixel data and is processing it to control each of the LEDs mounted on the BOF display. The whole PCB is rotating and is getting power from the support. So on the support there will be a motor which allows the POF to rotate and we also need motor driver. So the motor driver is actually generating a PVM signal and therefore is changing the speed of the motor. To get the feedback, the FPGA board will have a hull effect sensor to know when a full resolution is, is done. And also the motor driver will have the same sensor and therefore know how fast the motor is rotating. To round it up, there will be a power supply that we can directly plug the BOF display into the mains power and get our 12 volt we need for our whole project. First we will take a quick look at the 3D construction. This is first of all for safety and second it's a nice possibility to hold the motor and to mount the rotating part. Next we have to think about how we want to arrange the LEDs. So the first is we want to use four wings because it's easier to balance it. When, this, when the PCB is rotating really fast, it's much easier if it has four wings to make it balanced. If you have just two wings, it can be much more difficult to balance it. So if we have four wings, we can also use these wings to get higher resolution. So I decided to make two redundant wings so they display the same pixels. And the other two wings will be 2.5 millimeter off so they will be between the other two wings. So effectively double the resolution. And when you look, I use 32 LEDs for one wing and I have the middle LED. And when you sum it all up, you will get a resolution of 131 times 131 pixel. Then we need to control the pixels. These are serial pixels. Each pixel X LED driver is already built in and so we need to push the data into it. Therefore, we need to calculate how much data updates we need. And for this, I constructed this formula which tells me how much LED I can control at a certain diameter. At the outer diameter, there will be much more updates than actually in the inner diameter. So I group the LEDs from the outer, uh, most outer LED to the more inner LEDs and the outer, the most outer group has five LEDs and the next group will have six LEDs, the group after that eight and the last group can have uh, up to 14 LEDs. But we actually don't use that, we only need 13 or I think 12. The next uh, part we have to think about is the layout in the FPGA. In the FPGA we have a frame buffer so the serial data from the Wi-Fi is pushed into the frame buffer and the frame buffer is then used to read each pixel for each LED when we write to one LED. And the most complicated stuff about that is that we have to make a transformation. We know the angel and we know the distance from the center of every LED at every moment. So we have to calculate from that the Cartesian coordinates. And this is actually done with the Quartic algorithm. This is an optimized algorithm for transforming coordinates from polar to Cartesian coordinates. 
and then everything around is just managing the, the lead groups and uh, getting some parallelism out of it because the outer, most outer lead I think is updated 16,000 times a second and so we have to look a lot about timing and parallelism and try to get the most out of it. Now some highlights from the development process. The link to the full time-lapse will be shown here.
Now a look at the results.